G'day YouTube, my name's Lance, welcome to Bundy Bear Shed. Well, today I'm doing a, a bit of a review on the Fergie Positioner. And it's a, it's a little kit, it's called the Fergie Positioner Australia. And the phone number's on my kit, a Stephen 0417-151184 and John 0457-590040. Tassie. Um, Stephen's in Victoria by the looks of that. So anyone that's had a bit of a fiddle with a Fergie um, with a TEA 20 or, or a TE 20, um, TEA, TED, TEF 20, um, uh, when Harry Ferguson designed them, he designed them with the plough in mind and they've got a, a terrific and sensitive draft control. So draft control, sort of like traction control. If you're if your plough was going long, struck a bit of hard going, um, well, the, the draft would push on the top link, the hydraulics would lift slightly, um, take that load away. Then when the load come off the top link, it pulled back again, it would settle and away it'd go again. So that system worked great. I believe he invented the Ferguson, well, they call it the Ferguson system. Um, he, I believe he invented it and many have copied since, but, um, the sensitivity of a little Fergie is hard to beat in draft. But being a good draft control tractor doesn't mean it's a good position control tractor. Now, um, position control is normally used for a non-ground engaging implement. So a plough, scufflers, things like that that engage with the earth and pull along and, and can hit something their draft implements. You need to use the draft control on the Fergie and if they hit something they'll they'll pop up and, and it'll clear and, and keep forward motion with the tractor. Now position control. Position control is used with a carry-all, a slasher or a topper if you're overseas and, um, and position control is where you would like to say get your fertiliser spreader on the back and set it at a certain height set your ground speed PDO or whatever you need to do and away you go. Um, a carry-all or a link box, you can set it at a certain height by the lever and don't have to worry about it. Now a, a thing that these tractors are known for, gives everyone the shits, um, is slashing. When you're slashing, topping, you're going along great guns, you think you've got a, you know, a, good, a good nice length of grass behind you with your slasher you turn around, the bloody thing's up here or, <laughs> or down there. And that's the draft control. Now, um, I have a bit of a theory with the slashes like that, that if all of a sudden you're scooting along and your track, your implement just drops, um, I believe you need to adjust the top spring in your draft control. But, um, so for position control, these fellas, Aussies, they've come up with this idea and they come out with an instruction, and I've, I've had a read of the instruction, and um, it's a comprehensive instruction and a good instruction, I believe. I, I understand how it works. Um, I understand the gist of the whole thing, and it's got a few colour photos on the front of where a few particular things go. And so I bought this kit, and look, I bought this kit ages ago. I've probably had it for a few years. And I was going to fit it to one tractor or another. <laughs> me and my mate Rob bought one each and we never got around to fitting them. And I've just finished in, on Bundy Bear's shed, I've just finished the TEA 20, 1954 TEA 20 series. I've adjusted the linkage. I've just this morning filmed the linkage adjustments or the, the top cover adjustment. And I wanted to do that before I started fitting this kit. So we know the hydraulics are working. There's no there's no use fitting this kit on a tractor where the hydraulics are a bit dodgy. You don't know if everything's working right. You put it on, say, what a heap of shit. So um, I've adjusted the hydraulics. I'm happy with how they are. I'm, I'm pleased with the adjustment on my tractor. So now I've pulled it all apart and um, we're going to have a play, have a fiddle with this. So on the, on the Ferguson tractor, this is your lift cylinder and you have a few slots here and to get this lever in the correct position for lifting and lowering you're having a forward and a back adjustment here 
So what they've done with this position control is at the back of the housing there, there's a curve. There's a, just a curved section where the, um, and they've done that to allow the lift arm on the right hand side to come through. So what they're doing there is they're putting, they're using this on the lift arm to come in and the radius will rub on there and it'll push this forward and backwards to wherever it needs to be. So I can see how that works, that's fine. Um, if you watch my hydraulics video, I'll put a link up here. Um, if, if you watch my hydraulics video, um, you'll sort of understand how that adjustment works. But when you read the instruction, the first couple of things that you need to do is get the bolts that hold this quadrant on, that hold the whole lever onto the housing, and you need to drill a couple of three millimetre holes in them. And that's a hole, it doesn't have to be three millimetres, it has to be the size of the tie wire you want to use to stop these screws um, disappearing. Because this cam here, now you can see it starts off thin and goes fat here, because that rubs on this surface here, like that, I polished this up. Now, look, it's a nicely laser cut piece. I just thought, well, there's paint on there. Paint can bind and that sometimes. So I thought, bugger it, I'm just gonna polish that surface up. So I've done that. I've kept the exact profile. I've just made it smoother. On my quadrant here, now my quadrant through on that curve, it was, where they'd cut it out in the factory years ago, it was quite rough. And so I smoothed that off as well. I thought, well, if you're going to have two rubbing things, let's give it a fair chance. And there's also some spaces. And now these spaces, there's only a couple of them, they have to fit in these holes here. And that has to be a nice, nice smooth fit there. So I actually, um, mine, mine were catching a little bit. So all I did was I got the drill put it in, give it a rattle around, and, um, and that wasn't quite enough. So then I went and did the job properly. I got the die grinder. And look, you don't need to open up bigger. Um, you just need to take any burrs away, just so that little spacer slides back and forth nicely. Um, I used a little right angle die grinder with a buffing pad on it to polish up in here and polish on there. So it does leave a nice smooth surface. And so. All right, we might pop over to the tractor and start fitting this thing and we'll put it through its paces and just have a bit of a play with it today. And yeah, it doesn't look too, too hard to do. I think once you do the homework of, of drilling your bolts, making sure those little bushes are free to slide in the slides, and I don't know whether it's necessary or not, but I made sure my, um, where the two rubbing pieces were um, I made sure they were as smooth as could be, just so there was no binding or pushing or anything like that. So, All right, let's go over the tractor. We'll bolt this thing on and we'll have a bit of a play, eh? Okay, I'm working from the opposite side of the tractor that you'll be working from, no doubt, because I've got a camera in the way. So what we do first here is we undo the lock tabs here, pop these screws out with the washer. Now this piece here sits on there. Then these do up again. Get in there. And the instruction says to take it to the back here as far as we can go. And we just have these just firm enough to hold it in place, but it can still slide. So that's back as far as it can go. All right, the quadrant. 
stop looking, I found it. I forgot I put it over here. Okay, the quadrant can go in, in the raised position. So we'll pop that there. Now, the little, um, the small bushes go in the top screws only. So we'll fit those. And there's some washers supplied, and you can see on the washers, most washers when they're stamped, they have a flat edge or a smooth edge. They're saying they'd like the smooth edge to the quadrant, to the slide. Those washers are a little bit firm. I oh, know. It's all good. Don't mind me. Okay, so let's do that up. Now, this has a gasket there. I've decided not to fit the gasket on mine. I'm just going to have two grease surfaces rubbing together. Um, oh, just something I thought I'd, I'd do. Um, you should probably follow the instructions. I like fiddling, seeing what happens with things. Okay, so there's the other spacer for the top. I'll bring that in here. That wash is still loose. That one's not. Okay, that's gone in a couple of threads deeper because the new washers supplied are thinner than the old washers, so that's okay. Now, what did I do with those other screws, Lance? They were sitting on the bench here, where I was showing everyone about them. Okay, once again, the smooth side of the washer to the quadrant or to the inside of the tractor. They also say about banging the threads and um, locking it in place. I'm not going to do that yet. I want to play with adjustments and things first. That linkage should just go down now anyway. Come in under there. Yep, that's lining up. Just nip all that up. Firm. Okay. Now we'll come back half a turn. And what we're doing here is we're just giving the quadrant some wriggle room. So that should be able to slide forward and backwards now under its own steam. I might just nip that up just a little bit. That needs backing off. Okay, and the idea is that as the arm comes up and this fatter cam here comes up, it pushes your quadrant forward. So the problem with pushing it forward is we need to get it back again. And so they've designed this little guide here to put a spring on. So let's fit that.
pretty simple, isn't it, really? Like 20 minutes, you have it all done. I did a bit of preparation work, though. Okay, so that spring goes there, and if we put this back in here, So this spring needs to sit on the quadrant but not on the housing here. So Firm. That spring's on a bit of a funny angle. But the system should, when we I'll take these hammers out of the way, I don't imagine I should be needing a hammer. I'll come around and get a screwdriver just to make sure I can see that that spring's working and not binding. So that's forward, that's back, that's forward, that's back, okay. We'll start with the linkage arms right down. We'll just do a bit of a test here, I believe. I'll start the tractor. I don't know how the sound's going to go here, so I'll see. I usually got a dog that barks, so when the tractor starts, I'll try and keep them quiet, but anyway, I've got no say.
Okay, that's working. Now, the you can see I could just move the lever a bit and have it adjust the position of the implement. I'd be interested to see now if an implement puts pressure on there, what happens. So I'll go and get the bar, and let's just do that for the fun of it. Because your draft control, I'm imagining, will be out of range, which is fine. So normally with a linkage implement, the arms are either um, level or just down a little bit. Um, it's shifted the position of the quadrant down here a bit lower than it would have been, but there's a bit of slop there. I might, I will, uh, I will nip that up off camera um, to the extent where there's no slopping around like a cock in a sock. It's just... Um, it's free enough to slide back and forth as it's supposed to, but there's no movement there. So I'll fiddle with that a bit. And then that's why these bottom bolts here, um, these top ones can tighten up fairly well, I believe. We'll just try it on the spacer. So. No, so that's too tight. That should have went back under its own steam, so I've got them too tight. So there's a bit of a fiddle there, and that's why they've said with these bottom bolts, um, they say to grab the bolts and put it on an anvil and just smack the thread, just to put a burr so you can adjust these um, these bottom bolts, well I suppose all the bolts, so you can adjust them to a point where they're not going to move on you and have this slopping around. So there you go, I think that's a success. Um, yeah, Aussie product, been around for ages. There's a bit of slop there on mine. But look, that's, it's not really going to matter. I, I will, I'll, off camera, I will find the position for forward and backwards here so it's as tight as I can get it without hindering any movement of this spring. So possibly if I got this, that spring, this spring here is not quite lined up perfectly. So we'll I'll get in there. If I can probably bring that out a little. So I can sneak in here. But yeah, it doesn't quite line up perfectly. I'll tighten this up again. And I suppose it's, the bracket would be meant to come and sit against the housing. But I was just trying to line the spring up a little bit better. All right. I think that's a good thing. We've still got to put a slasher on it and muck around outside at some stage. But as for fitting it, it's a clear and simple process. It works. Like, um, it does work for sure. All right. We'll have a bit of a chat, eh? Well, there you go. I've fitted it onto my... the. 
Fergie positioner onto my TA20 here and it works well. Um, I didn't follow the book exactly, um, but I sort of understood how it worked, so that was fine. So you may notice in the, you've noticed in the video that when the arms were lifted, I knocked the cam down um, to have my quadrant fully forward. So I knew that was my raised position. I knew the cam was at its, the quadrant was at its full forward position. So with the arms as high as they could go, the quadrant right forward, by knocking that down there, that was as high as everything could go at that position. So when the, so when the linkage arms come up to the high position, the quadrant had moved its full travel forward, so all the lifting had stopped. So look, I think it's a good thing. Um, I, I, I could have a position wherever I liked, um, and on my tractor I had to move the lever probably three quarters of an inch to have a reaction either way, sometimes an inch. That's fine. Um, on these tractors with a slasher and that on, that's all you want, you know. Like you could just set it up like that and away you go. The thing I was a bit surprised about was when I put the bar in the draft spring and the draft spring was still working, and look, I suppose when you think about it, why wouldn't it? It's still hooked up. It's still having an effect on that fork, on the valve, on your um, hydraulic pump. So whether it's a usable draft control, I don't know. Uh, um, yeah, um, on my tractor, where I had my hydraulics set on the quadrant, um, I put a couple of centre pop marks there because... I was going to pull it apart and show you how to adjust the hydraulics and put it back again. So I would suggest if you wanted to do draft control with your tractor and not worry about the position control, um, if you put a centre pop mark on the slide where you knew you had a good adjustment and you locked the bolts off there so it couldn't move any further so you knew your quadrant was where you'd adjusted it to and you just undid the two bolts off the end of your um, off the end of your rock shaft and just pop that cam out of the way you would be right back to working how you wanted to be you don't have to take the whole kit off to get your tractor back to draft control just pop that cam off I reckon as would be the simple and the easiest way to go those two bolts down the bottom if you've got them wide or however you've chosen to lock them up um, yeah nip them up nip all the four bolts up, um, it's only half a turn, and um, pop that cam off and you're back to draft control how you'd like to be for ploughing. Then when it comes to position again, back them all off half a turn like we did, pop your cam back on. You could even, where that cam is now on my tractor, I may even do that as scribe a line, so that when I put the cam back on next time, I can just pop the cam back on, put the put the quadrant forward, pop the cam on, line it up with the line, nip me bloody bolts up and away we go. So oh, look, I think it's a good thing. Um, I'm not sponsored or um, this is in a, pa an endorsed, a paid endorsement or anything like that. Um, I bought this myself ages ago. Um, I get nothing out of selling them or anything like that. It was just, I had it, it's about a Fergie, so it's interesting to me. And I'm sure it's interesting to many others too. So, look, I, I think it's a good thing. Um, it's a good way of getting position control on your tractor. Um, I left the gasket off mine. I just wanted the two metal surfaces. I thought um, some gasket paper would gall and bind, and um, that's what I chose to do. Whether you do that or not, it's entirely up to you. Um, the instruction says about a gasket. Um, I'm not going to put mine on. Um, my tractor is not going to go out in the weather and sit out in the weather. If it's rain and I'm staying inside drinking beer, not going outside. So I'm leaving my gasket out. It lives in a shed, so um, that's my choice. So, look, I, I think it's good. If you're interested in um, getting one for your slasher or something like that, uh, look, uh, ha have a go at it. I, it's not hard. Um, the video hasn't taken all that long. The prep work I did polishing the quadrant and making sure the holes and all were there, that was worth doing. That saved me a lot of time on camera, which is something I wanted to do. So, look, all in all, thumbs up. It's a, it's a good jigger. Um, yeah, don't be shy to have a go at one. 
I'll put the website link in the description of this video. You can contact them yourself, sort that out. I've, I've no part of that, I've just, I'm just interested. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, like the channel, subscribe, leave a comment. Um, comments down the bottom on questions about it. If, you, if you'd like me to try adjusting it a different way or something like that, leave a comment, you know, we'll play. So, all right, thanks for dropping by. Catch you all later on, eh?